Hello guys, what's up? Uh, I hope everyone's perfect and listening to good music. So this weekend, uh, I was in a mood to go back to the basics and try to develop the basics for the new tools that I've learned. And I've really been practicing on Streamlit these days. And the codes that I wrote in uh, in my GitHub repository, if you, if you have seen uh, the oil and gas data analysis uh, repository that I have on my GitHub, there are a lot of uh, reservoir engineering, uh, you know, bits and pieces uh, kind of codes, but all of them are from back in days when I used to code things in my Jupyter notebooks or Google Colab notebooks. So I thought, why not, uh, given now that you know uh, a few more tools, why not turn them into some sort of applications or some something because we are trying to add petroleum from scratch we are trying to build a whole new reservoir engineering suite uh, that uh, will be a collection of various possible uh, you know simple looking tools uh, that can be used for quick analysis of various things that we do right so one of the things that i i absolutely loved the concept that i absolutely love is the is the fractional flow concepts and the frontal displacement theory so for whoever who is not, uh, you know, sure about this, uh, basically, when we are trying to produce oil from a reservoir, uh, we we try to inject water uh, as a part of, you know, water flooding or secondary recovery and stuff. So the aim is to push oil using the water that you are trying to inject using an injector through an injector. And uh, the ideal result would be to push uh, oil uh, through some sort of a piston kind of pushing, right? You imagine a piston, uh, that sort of uniform push we are trying to achieve, but that's not always possible. There are a lot of problems that we face when we try to inject water in order to recover more and more oil. And that's exactly what the frontal displacement theory tries to target. We want to simulate and we want to find out the best possible, uh, you know, uh, case using which we can obtain the highest possible recovery right and that's what i will be showing through this app that i have uh, built using python uh, and if you are if you want to see the background code of this you can go to my uh, github repository and you will find that up uh, so let's get to the working mode of this uh, basically uh, suppose you have a particular viscosity oil in your reservoir you want to find out what should i do to to obtain more and more oil recovery from that so let's let's set up a case for ourselves. Let's assume that our uh, our uh, oil viscosity is around 1000 centipoise, uh, not too light oil, of course, so that we understand this concept better, right? And water viscosity, let's start with one centipoise uh, water viscosity, right? And now we will sh we will see the fractional flow plot uh, using these two inputs. Of course, you see the note here, the rel pump correlations, which are again one more input to this uh, fractional flow theory. These correlations I'm using uh, as per my own. Uh, I, I have a hard coded them, uh, but you can uh, you know vary these correlations as you calculate the fractional flow as a function of saturation. So you click on this button, which shows us the fractional flow plot. Now, the way I've built this plot is we, we have a red line, which is kind of an indicator of how much oil will you be recovering, right? Because uh, if you assume uh, it to be like a steady state flow, the, the amount of water you inject is kind of related with the amount of oil you will recover given that you are not breaking through, right? So uh, that's an indirect approximation, but that gives us a good idea to compare between various cases. So in this case, 1000 centipoise oil, uh, you are injecting one centipoise water. It's like a very thick oil as compared to a very thin water that you are using to push. Of course, things like viscous fingering or something will happen. It will not be an ideal piston flow, uh, piston push, because the thin water which is coming from behind will just finger through the, uh, the oil globules. And that's why you can see only 7% recovery factor can be obtained right and now i have two options because my recovery factor is not too great i have two options either i can reduce the oil viscosity to a particular value or i can increase the water viscosity because if both of them are comparable to each other and are equivalent or at the same level with each other then we can obtain a very very ideal looking piston flow but right now that's not the case so let's say i found a way to reduce my oil viscosity to half of it 
that's a huge effort but somehow i could find a way uh, let's say i could reduce the oil viscosity to 500 centipoids and i press enter and now i see the fractional flow remember initial re uh, recovery factor was seven percent now i click the fractional flow plot again nine percent recovery factor just imagine i reduce my whole oil viscosity to half of it but uh, the increment of recovery factor was just 9%, uh, just 2% increment. And that simulation tells us that this is possibly not a great option. It is a too much effort, like you might have to do some thermal stimulation or something, but uh, that still is not going to help because you can see your recovery factor is not going to increase by much. So let's go back to the initial state again, the original state of our reservoir. We are just trying to brainstorm on what should be done. Let's say now I target my water. How will you target your water viscosity? In order to increase the water viscosity, you will focus on uh, trying to mix water with polymer or something like that because that can help you increase your water viscosity. So it's like a, a water mixed with polymer or maybe purely polymer. So let's say I just increase by one centipoise. That's a very minute increase in water viscosity. I click on this button again. You can see just by one centipoise increase in water viscosity, my fractional flow plot says me that uh, tells me that uh, two percent <laughs> increment can easily be obtained by just this much effort so that tells us that targeting water is maybe a better option and easier option that's why this theory is so great uh, now let's say i found a way to increase my water viscosity to 10 uh, or my injection fluid viscosity to 10 and let's click on enter again and let's click on this button again you can see 15 percent recovery let's say if i could increase my water viscosity to 100 centipoids and i click on this you can see 29 almost 30 percent recovery factor and that is why uh, this tool is great because it can suggest you what kind of viscosity you can target to obtain what kind of recovery factor right uh, of course this is kind of the starter level tool but uh, it gives you a great understanding of the concept now just not this but this tool has a bit more to it we can also visualize uh, the the way the water flood will progress uh, what uh, position from the injector will have what kind of saturation so we can see the way the frontal advancement is happening the waterfront advancement is happening so let's see that uh, so suppose we we are injecting at let's say 1000 centipoid 1000 uh, barrels per day and let's say we are injecting for 10 days and other properties are fairly consistent across the reservoir that's why they have the default values the cross section is let's say 50000 uh, feet square the injector producer distance is 2000 feet uh, let's increase the porosity a bit let's say 25% porosity is there and now you see the one dis 1d displacement curve along with the fractional flow plot you can see my recovery factor is pretty fine in this case and what is this there's a problem right what is the problem here on the x axis we have the position from the injector x distance from the injector and on the y axis we have the saturation mm -hmm. uh, the problem is at one particular position let's say this eight feet position you are having two saturations is that possible definitely not so there is a problem with this approach there is this particular uh, there is no problem but this was addressed by a few scientists and one of them was uh, one of them was successfully able to apply a correction to that correction to that and that's called the Velge's correction so if you apply i hope i'm pronouncing the name right so if you apply this Velge's correction you will now see that your way the way the front is advancing is given by this plot right so if you keep on injecting for 10 days your front will reach at this particular point uh, the the water front will be at this and behind the front for every position this will be the saturation and you can see at the injector which is zero feet the saturation is the maximum because that's where you're injecting from so if you if you increase the number of days let's say 100 press it again and you see the Velge's corrected version of this thing recovery factor is fine but you can see now your front is advanced up to 160 feet and now if you increase the days of injection to let's say 500 i'm not sure about the practicality of these terms i'm just explaining the concept using my tool i click on enter again and i click on Velge's correction again there you go you are up to 800 feet uh, from the injector and you can see your injector producer length is 2000 feet you still can go 
a bit ahead you can keep on injecting for a few more days uh, and keep on recovering more and more oil and stuff so if you keep on injecting let's say for uh, for 1000 days uh, let's see what happens uh, if you keep on injecting for 1000 days at the same rate you can see you are getting close to the injector now you're in uh, uh, to the producer now your front has almost reached the producer if you keep on injecting for 200 more days and you see the welges corrected version of this front you can see now i guess you have reached uh, your your producer and that's what is called in reservoir engineering the breakthrough point at this particular time uh, from the start of injection you can say your water front has broken through and now just not oil but your water will also be producing and that's uh, possibly the end of favorable uh, injection regime right so i hope you learned a few things from this particular tool you you have the code on my github repository just go there and have a look and uh, see you again with a few more tools like i always say streamlit is really really cool thanks a lot